abandoned man in the wash. Okay. This job isn't always for the faint of heart, I'll say that. So there are definitely fewer animals out here tonight. All right, the weather is really good. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna head down to Phoenix to go back to uh, the place I have been doing research for a long time, for years now, and see what we can find. I bet I'm gonna find a lot of rattlesnakes. I kinda changed my plans early last time because I, uh, I didn't like that bobcat. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure it wasn't rabid. Uh, I don't think it is now after thinking about it, but I didn't wanna take that chance. So I left, went to another area. You saw how it went. So I'm gonna go back to that area and resume what I was hoping to do. I remember when I first moved to Phoenix a long time ago, um, you drive through town, there's all these big mountains in the middle of Phoenix, I'm not sure. You know, if you've ever been to Phoenix, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Really popular, and I was sure there wouldn't be any uh, wildlife in any of those mountains. It just wouldn't make sense in the middle of a hot city for there to be a ton of, of animals, but um, that's not the case. The mountain preserves in Phoenix are home to a, a ton of wildlife, rattlesnakes included, Gila monsters, all kinds of stuff. A really thriving population of javelina, uh, coyotes, a surprising amount is still here. Doesn't mean it doesn't have its challenges. It's really hot, it's getting hotter, it's getting drier, and every year the entire ecosystem degrades a little bit. Uh, this is our seventh year in this study. I'm hoping to be able to do it forever because there's never going to be a time that we stop learning. Uh, this is maybe the canary in the coal mine for the rest of the natural desert out here. Whatever happens in this little hot area as the climate continues to get hotter and drier, this is what's going to happen everywhere. So I'm on a, a even busy road and I saw this crossing the road. So I just jumped out and scooped it up and uh, I'll pull over here when I get to the parking area uh, to show you what it is. But it's a little tiny hatchling long nose snake. Here it is. Brand new baby long nose snake that pooped all over my hand and is bleeding because that's what they do. It's trying to say don't eat me. I'm maybe sick or something. Um, so right out of the bat, he knows what to do, except for that whole crossing the road part. So I'm gonna set him aside and then I'm going the way out of here. All right, at least it seems to be a little bit cooler than last time I was here. 37, almost 38 degrees Celsius. Not bad. I bet we see some stuff out in this tonight. Hi there. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Bryce. Awesome. <laughs> the cool. Hey. Thank you. Oh, right. That's actually a probably average sized adult oh, out here. Oh, in Arizona, they tend to be a little smaller than what you'll see in South Texas. <laughs> Should be a nice thing to grab. So, yeah, I think so too. Cool. And how far can you strike? About that far? Yeah, something of the sort. Yeah, something. Better safe than sorry, but nice right around there. Really uh, one thing I always emphasize is that in a position like this, this animal's obviously aware that there is some sort of threat present. If this animal was sitting in a corner, coiled, not doing anything, you could walk by it a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And if you're not poking it, prodding it, messing with it, it's just gonna sit there hoping you think it's a pet rock that you keep on walking by. Hi there. Yeah, I see a couple flicks coming in. Here. Those are all relatively uh, well mannered though. <laughs> I'll take this one back out into the preserve. I'll find a nice pack rat nest, a mammal mound, somewhere where the snake can reintegrate into its home range, uh, where it can still eat all the rodents and stuff like that in the area, but where it's safe from all the different conditions of the Sonoran Desert. Into the darkness we go. Man in the 
wash. I mean, anyway, it wasn't exactly remote, but I thought I was far enough out at that point. Well, let me head a little farther out. This job isn't always for the faint of heart, I'll say that. The amount of jump scares and twists and turns I go through sometimes. Whew. Alrighty, finally found this uh, Western Diamond back here, a nice home over the wash system. Got a pack rat nest that's uh, been taken over in this old rock here. I'm kind of rushing through some of the spots that I've already been because my priority here is to get to the places that I didn't get to last time. It might still just be a little bit hot. Maybe if I was here a half hour. Oh, there's a diamondback right there. Never mind. I should shut up now. Snake is under that. Why is it so wet? <laughs> Do we know you? No tag, huh? I'm sure without the hat. I just gotta let him go. <laughs> I don't want to hurt it. But anyway, he doesn't have a tag, so I at least know that now. I can go ahead and mark that down. Let's see if there's anyone else. All right. I'll get some data on them, I'll get out of here. So there are definitely fewer animals out here tonight. I just passed where I left the trail last time um, because of the bobcat and I've only seen one rattlesnake. And last time, by this point, I had seen seven. So something's a little different. I'm sure we'll see more. This little section through here is kind of the Diamondback strip where there's kind of the center of the population of Western Diamondbacks is right in this little area where all this nice soft sand exists. Though it doesn't mean any of them are going to be out. Hmm. Nobody. Interesting. Unexpected. see two rattlesnakes at the same time. There's a western diamondback right there and there's a speckled rattlesnake right there. I think the diamondback's gonna try to get away first so I'm gonna process it and see if I can keep this speckled going anywhere. If it tries to go I will catch it also. Oh let's go on first. Come here big guy. Okay, I guess I'll process you first. I just want to see if I know this animal. This looks to be a gravid female. It's not going to be getting a uh, pit tag today if it is not one that's already known to us. Pit tag. We know this one. Cool. All right, that's the fun part, is we could see when I last saw the snake. It's probably been a while. Okay, and while I was photographing that snake, it looks like that diamondback that was sitting here decided it was a good time to get the hell out of here. Oh well, I think I chose correctly, considering that that snake is a recapture and it's gravid. That's a really good little point right there. It's a snake I probably haven't seen for at least a couple of years out here in the wild and what looks like the same exact spot I saw last time. Uh, pregnant. Doing well. Let's see if we can find another diamond back up here. Well, I think I might know what my problem is. <laughs> uh, 
I think just the humidity and how hot the day was, it wasn't as hot as other days and it started out cooler than I did last time, but the temperature has not dropped at all. Uh, it is still 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 10 o'clock and uh, I think that's why there's not a lot out. That's just too hot. That's 10 degrees away from fatal for a lot of these animals, so they are just still going to be tucked away for the most part. So some will brave it, most will not. If it were 10 degrees cooler, I'd probably be seeing more snakes. If it was 15 degrees cooler, I'd be seeing, well, I'd be seeing what I saw last time, which is a lot of snakes. I see a little teeny tiny long nose snake hatchling right there. Whoa. He's fast. All right, I'll leave him alone. I guess he's got the, he's got what, it's ta what it takes to survive. He's just evaded his first predator in life. But this is not looking like it's gonna be a super late night for me. I'm all geared up to be out here until sun up, if need be, if things are hopping, but they are not. I've gone through a lot of really good habitat where usually, if I'm gonna see a lot of things, Good for me to know though, that helps me out because just like we document conditions when we find things, we also document things when we don't find things. So uh, I will be able to tell what was different about a few days ago when this place was just crawling with rattlesnakes versus right now where it's just kind of dead. So it's all useful information either way. I'm gonna check a few more places and then start working on um, hiking my way out of here. There's a little tiny tiger rattlesnake right there. I'm happy to see it. Can you get some photos and see what's up? I also know for a fact I don't need to tag or I don't need to scan this little guy because it's too little to have a tag. It's definitely a new little snake. So all I'm going to do is get photos of it and leave it alone. That's it. A beautiful little snake though. I love tiger rattlesnakes. I think people get all excited about specs and all that, but I think it's just because they it takes longer to get to know tigers. They're not as flashy. This is a fun little place. I think maybe five or six years ago now, I was standing over here in the drainage walking up and uh, there were some people hiking on this trail. They saw me off trail, even though I have the markers and all that stuff to do so and all the permits. Anyway, they stood here and uh, the guy started yelling at me over there about being off trail and all that. So I told him I was doing a study and that I have permission and all the necessary paperwork. And even though he's, you know, he's not any authority figure, I'd be happy to show it to him, but just make him feel better. Uh, I didn't want to hear it. He got all mad and was yelling at me some more. And I realized that while he was standing here yelling at me, there was a big diamondback right here at his feet and he didn't see it. So I saw that and thought if I told him that, uh, I know what happens is people freak out. They could actually be bitten uh, more easily if they start freaking out. Uh, so I just got out of the situation and agreed with him and apologized so he would leave. And he did and he took off and the dime bag never moved. So then as soon as he got outside, I came over here and tubed it and tagged it. <laughs> and uh, I've seen it a few times since then. But I always just thought that was funny. Uh, and I appreciate the guy doing that, to be honest. Um, if it, it is, he is correct that people shouldn't be um, screwing around the wash. It is uh, illegal, for one. And lots of reasons and all that. But, you know. It's fine. And one more healthy Western Diamondback on the way back. Hanging out. Just coming out. So kind of confirming that issue of being too hot. So back at the car, uh, definitely a slower night, but I did still see six rattlesnakes. But in that same exact hike on a, a good night, it could be 20 or double that. So I'm um, happy with six, but not enough to stay out all night. So I'm going to bed. Well, I'm going, I'm going home and I'm going to bed in that order. I'm tired. See you later.